Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams. Today I don't have a lot of time to talk about a lot of things in After Effects, so we are going to talk about things that save you time in After Effects, and those are presets. Uh, we're going to go over how to make them, uh, what you can do with them, what some of their limitations are, and then I'll show you some of the basic ones that I keep on file, just because they really speed things along, so we'll speed this along. In After Effects, presets are over here in the Effects and Presets um, window? Anyway. You can find them by just, you know, twirling down animation presets and then they have their own, there's a whole bunch and they're pretty neat. So like, I'd like some backgrounds, I'd like this background. And then you double click on it and it creates a new layer with that stuff on it. And that's pretty neat. So it's a quick way to get a bunch of things and what it puts out there is a layer with a stack of effects on it and a bunch of properties. So hit U, U and it'll bring up everything that this thing is dictating about this and you know it's a whole bunch of stuff so that's cool so you can see you can quickly generate things using the presets so you can also apply them to stuff so if you have like some text out there then you can apply some of these behaviors there are text based things that are only for affecting text layers we've got transitions and transforms and all sorts of things and you know, explore those and enjoy them, but what we're here to talk about is making your own. And this can be handy, for example, if there are things that you do a lot. So one of the things I do a lot is put a vignette on things. So having that two clicks away is very helpful. And what this is, is it's just a circle and it's got some stuff on it. And uh, I'll show you how to make this one from scratch because you'll probably make use of it. First thing to do is make a new solid. It doesn't matter what the solid is and that should be super important to you as well when making these things that when you make an effect that you intend to just fire off there then um, make sure that it doesn't really matter what you're firing it off onto so we have this thing medium blue solid whatever and then we do here we generate a circle so that's under generate circle which by default looks like this but we would like the color to be black make it a black circle We'd like to invert that circle and then you know we make the radius you know all the way out to the outside something like 1080 and then we give it a feather and then we feather it off like this and maybe uh, 540 and then we change the opacity down to 60. And we can change other aspects about this layer if we'd like as well so we can do things like uh, change its opacity uh, down to 25 or 65 or whatever you'd like but when you want to turn this into a preset hit UU call up everything you've changed about this and select everything that you want to become part of that preset and then you just go here and then you go save animation preset boom and just call this Vinny 2 I'll delete it later hit all right cool when you want to put this out there I'm just gonna search in here Vinny 2, double click on that, and it has created something that is exactly the same as that first thing we did. So we've created a preset, now it's out there. Some of the limitations though are that you can't have a preset generate two layers or multiple layers or affect a layer's blending mode, for example. That's a little bit dicey. However, you can use any combination of effects and properties to generate pretty interesting things that you can then apply to other stuff. So you should use it for something like color grading. So let me just import a photo real quick and then we will practice color grading and making a preset for that. Here's a picture from a beach somewhere, which is pretty great. Wonderful beach, I wear weird shoes. Anyway, so here we are at the beach and we would like to create a new, say a new adjustment layer. And now on this adjustment layer, we're going to apply things like a tint. We'll apply a tint to it and that tint will be 25 and then we're going to have a curves so we're going to apply curves to it that curves is going to do like this and then it's going to go a little like this and then we're going to take the blue and we're going to do a little bit like this Ooh, something like this good good so that's those things and let's put another tint on that bring that out maybe like this and so you fine tune it to have the look you want so then we just take these and we go you know save animation presets and call this uh, washed out good now we have something in here that is called washed out now I'm gonna warn you though if you just have nothing selected double click on washed out 
you've now created a solid that has that stuff on it. Then just hit the old adjustment layer here and you're good to go. So that's, that's what that does. A solid and an adjustment layer are exactly the same except that this button is checked. That's, that's all that it is. That's the only difference. So, you know, if you, if you do this, that's what happens. So that's how you can create some easy looks that can go here in your effects and presets. What if you want to make something with animation? And, you know, we're going to get a little bit clever here because I think I'm a very clever person. But since we can use any property, why don't we use the properties of some shape layers? Let's use the properties of a rectangle. Let's do that. All right. Stay with me, though. You know, this is getting a little bit weird. I'm going to put a fill on that. Um, I don't know. It's going to be black fill. That's good. Uh, not like my friend black fill, but uh, that's a whole other ballgame. So... I'm going to take the size here and I'm going to unlink them and start the size as being uh, 0 by 100 and I'm going to keyframe its size and position. Move ahead 20 frames. Uh, the position I'm going to push out here and then the size I'm going to make 500 by 0. So we're going from this to this. Pretty good so far. All right, I'm going to take these and then go keyframe assistant, easy ease them. Go into the curve here, pull them in like so. That's good. See how that looks? Kind of like that. All right, that's interesting enough, I suppose. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I'm just gonna have the starting position be a little bit further out. Maybe start out at 100. How's that going? Yeah, that's pretty good. And maybe I'll speed it up by dragging these things in. I don't need to take up too much time. Okay, now I'm gonna add what we call a repeater. Now I'm going to take that repeater. Uh, I'm going to make eight copies. I'm going to transform the repeater. Um, zero on the position and the rotation is going to be 45. It's going to look like this. Now what does that look like? Boom! Looks like that. Woohoo! That is pretty interesting. Okay. All right. This is this is cool enough. So what do I want to actually do with this though? I mean what? possibly be the purpose of this. Uh, let me just fine-tune it a little bit first. That uh, the size start at 50 here. It's a little bit too big for its own good. What do I want to do with this? Well, I want to select this layer. I want to hit UU, bring up everything about it, and then just select it. Then we go here and uh, save animation preset. Call this burst. Save it. And uh, let's see what happens when I double click on that. All right. Burst. User preset burst. Bring it out. Boom. Whoa, whoa, that was so good. So we've just created an element that we can generate using the effects and presets. Pretty cool, right? So how do we use this? Well, there's a few things to keep in mind. The first is that it's always going to create it at your playhead. So my playhead here is at 12 frames. Double click on that. It's created the layer for the entire time, but the keyframes and the properties only start at the playhead. Let's say I want to have one of those, then I want another one, and then I want another one. You know, I just want to keep making them. It's like pop, pop, pop. It's that easy. I've made it once, and I'm duplicating a whole bunch of times. Now, you can do this by creating comps and stuff like that, but what's awesome about the effects and presets is I close down this project, I open a new project, I go in here, I need it again, boom, bursting all over the place. It's fantastic. And that's true of any preset. And you can take these with you. If you have to go to someone else's office or whatever, you'll need to send them to somebody. These are actually files that live on your computer somewhere. So you can actually look them up, you can save them, compress them, send them. And if you want any of the presets that I showed you how to make in this tutorial, uh, they're all going to be available on evanabrams.com for free or whatever the hell you want to pay. I don't really care. Uh, it's really a tip-based system, I suppose. But anyway, the point is you're going to be able to download them there and then put them into the right folder and then you'll be able to load them in here and you'll be all good. Now, what that folder is is going to depend a lot on you, but for example, I'm on a Windows machine, so where my stuff is at can be found here at Libraries, Documents, Adobe, you know, Adobe After Effects CC, and then User Presets. So that's where those are going to be at. For you, it might be different, and I would say you need to check where you've installed things, if you've had any custom directories, whatever, whatever. If you're on Windows, that's where it'll be. If it's on Mac, it's going to be somewhere else, but similar. 
So just look in your libraries, find it. And uh, worst case scenario, if you don't know how to find it, make a new preset with a funny name, like, uh, I don't know, Excuvix Vesuvius, and then search your computer for that file, and you'll be able to find the path where things are at. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. Hopefully this has taught you some of the basics about working with presets, making your own, and how they can save you a lot of time and hassle. And for those of you who don't think saving time is cool, well, I'm glad your life is so leisurely. That's super good. Would you like to perhaps mow my lawn? Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. New tutorials every week here on the channel. Uh, subscribe if you like learning about After Effects and motion graphics and all sorts of fun things like that. Or just like hearing terrible jokes and my hatred of people with free time. And uh, get involved on Facebook and uh, tweet at me, at EC Abrams. If you have any questions about this, put it in the comments. Uh, I know I say this every time, but people forget. Um, yeah, and I guess that's it. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.